So welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss the collection API using Java. Let's say we have an e-commerce company that, for example, needs to send an email containing a promotion code to each customer whose birthday is tomorrow. This is a classic problem that many companies have all the time. So how to deal with this kind of problem with Java? We realize that you have several steps in this process. So the first one is to get the customer data. The second one is to store them in a memory. The third step is to process them. So processing means on the one hand to select the customers whose birthday is tomorrow and on the other hand to select the customers whose email address is known. And finally send the emails. These four steps define the, what we call a business process. How to retrieve customer data? We can, for example, get it from a database through GDBC API, for example, or from web services, or we can get them directly from the hard disk using Java IO, for example. So to store them in a memory, we must use the collection API. The collection API allows us to store and organize this data in the memory in an efficient way and offers access services to this data. What alternatives I could have to the collection API if I don't want to use the collections? For example, tables can be used to store customers. We add a client, then another one, and we notice that we have to manage an index to always point to the next empty cell. And if I saturate my array, I need a mechanism to copy this array into a bigger one. And another thing, if I delete a client in my table, it will create holes that must be managed either by replacing them with existing clients or by leaving them and of course there is a waste of memory. It's going to require writing a technical code to manage all this and who says technical code says a potential bug and a potential memory leak. These are the things that I really want to avoid in my application. And we will see that these services are proposed by default in the collection API. And of course, to treat data generally, we use the collection API, but sometimes in some particular cases, we can also use tables. So collection API defines a number of notions. And the first one is the collection. What's a collection? We can represent it by a bag in which we can put objects. In this bag, I can add and remove objects. And also I can test if an object is uh, present in it. I can also have the size of the bag, which represents the number of objects in it. And also I can iterate on the objects of this collection. Iterating is a mechanism that allows me to go through the objects in the bag that will have a different order than the order in which I have added the objects in my bag. So a collection does not retain the order in which the objects were added. And finally, a collection has an extensible size. That is to say that I can put as many elements as I want in my bag. So collection API will provide us with data structures having an implementation of these mechanisms.